Know this? Introducing the original Blood Clad Podcast, not PS. Two in semantic. Special dedication all the way from New York. Boom! Yeah, man, SWOT in semantic. Yeah, man, oh. Boom! Suit in semantic. Yeah, man, oh. Big up, sir, man. Suit in semantic. Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to the Soothing Semantics Podcast with your host, Rafi Pinsky. Today, we have a special guest, my roommate, long friend, Yoni Ackerman. Welcome, man. Yoni Ackerman. Yoni Ackerman. Welcome, dude. (laughs) Thank you. Good to be here. Good to hear. So today with uh, with my boy, Yoni, we're going to discuss a couple of things. We will discuss uh, the move... From New York to Florida, we both came down here together. Uh, He is an actuary by profession, so we'll kind of delve into that. I'm sure a lot of you have no idea what it is. Some do, some don't. We're also going to talk about his interest in health, fitness, finances, financial freedom to be specific, and a few other very new journeys that he hopes to partake in 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 the very near future. So, uh, without further ado, dude, let's discuss our move. It's, so, it's funny. When you said move, yeah. when we were talking earlier, <laughs> I thought you meant the move this week. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. We're moving. <laughs> yeah, well, we are moving apartments, but do you think anyone cares? Oh, no. I was like, all right, you want to talk about the move? We'll talk <laughs> about the move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's been a year, almost a year, March 12th, March 25th, respectively, for our moves. And... You moved down here for work. You were looking for a roommate. I was looking to leave New York, and I was looking to do it with someone because I wouldn't go solo, and it worked out well. We both, uh, Florida was on our radars. Your work was moving here. It was less cold, less taxes, and uh, less obsessive hustle, of you know, mindset. So and that was pretty much it. I think you broached the subject in January. And then, Pretty sure it was January, right? Sometime in January. And then I, and then I let my, uh, and then you know we worked out some logistics, let my work know, and getting into March, and then I moved end. Of, you moved, and then I moved into March to give them a couple weeks' notice. Yep, the rest no. is history, dude. Yeah. And now we're uh, here for for uh, indefinitely. Yeah, I don't have any ch- any plan of moving anywhere. <laughs> Except for uh, down the block. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're moving apartments, doing construction on a balcony. I'm telling you things nobody cares to know, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the daily life of Rafi Pinsky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, Johnny Boy, now that we're here, you are an actuary by profession. He kind of takes care of the home. He works from home. He loves it. So <laughs> he's pretty much, he's decided to retire at 26. It's not a bad, not a bad life. I was uh, 25 when I moved. That's true. You retired a year ago. <laughs> he's an actuary by profession. I, I've learned a nice amount about it by being roommates with him, but I mean, kind of go into more about what you do. Yeah, I won't uh, bore everyone with the details, mm. but essentially I just do a lot of forecasting, projecting of liabilities and assets, making sure future and present obligations pledged from corporations to their employees can be met. And if not, then how to get to the point that they can be met, you know, at a high confidence level and you know we also design and implement and monitor not just the funded level but you know the rules the laws regulations of employer sponsored benefits so i don't work on healthcare or executive comp but that's something else the company i work for does i work specifically in retirement sector so think 401ks pension plans 403bs um yeah things like that non-qualified things that the government that you don't get tax deductions for or you know, things like uh, things, things like that. It's a lot of math. It's a lot of math. Yoni's a math guy. He's a numbers guy. He's, he's, he's been very helpful because I'm, math is not more my forte. So it's been, it's been nice in that regard. Yeah, it I definitely mean, has. unfortunately, uh, people are scared of math. And not that you are scared of math, but a lot of people, I'm sure a lot of people listening to this went numb. You can tune back in. We're done. <laughs> we're done talking about the actuary thing. <laughs> but a lot of people just hear like math numbers and they're just like, huh? Yeah, okay. And then, 
you know, zone back in when you're like, hey, you want to get dinner? Like, yeah, yeah. let's get dinner. <laughs> <laughs> did you, it's really, it is true. People get turned off. Like I did the last episode with Simon and I'm fascinated by it. And I, I really didn't know a lot about it, but we were discussing it. The more we went into it, the more I, it, there were topics I knew about. We did, we did a, the recent, the, the prior episode was about urology. So there was a lot I didn't know. So we, with the actuarial business, there's a lot I don't know as well. So at the same time, I know nothing about urology, but I've kind of learned by, like I said, by talking to Yoni a little more about it. I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but being in the field you're in maybe allowed you to kind of branch off into the interest or hobby of financial freedom. You know, we've kind of gone from dealing with numbers all the time and, and figuring out statistics. I mean, how, how as far as what people's plans should be. So now you've kind of built this interest. It hasn't been that recent. I mean, it's been something you've been into for a few years already. But Yoni has a very big interest in becoming financially free. So that doesn't mean necessarily being loaded, but he wants to be in a situation where his expenses are far lower than his income, where he's in a position that he doesn't have to worry about his next meal. He's set. He has a minimalist attitude. So he's he's very very simple in that sense. He doesn't buy much, doesn't have a lot of belongings. He can pretty much pack up in one backpack and just head off to Cabo tomorrow. <laughs> you know? Not 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 inaccurate. Right. Not an Ackerman. Yes. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it, the job definitely helps in the sense I was able to cultivate. I mean, I learned math in college and high school. And Dude, you were born, you came out of your mother like that. <laughs> yeah, so I can't say I got any, and the job itself doesn't involve much complex math or more, more than high school level, I, I, I'd say, on a daily basis at least. It's more just you have to have a comfort with numbers, which, which we already said a lot of people don't have. But the job definitely gave me experience with Excel and manipulating numbers and being more fluent with numbers, which is very important if you're going to try to plan your future or anyone's future. And obviously nothing can be certain, but better than being 100% stabbed in the dark or just a feeling. And we were talking about this last week. So basically I am putting a lot more effort into writing down everything I spend and I credit a lot of that to Yoni, mainly to Yoni, because he has he's a very organized person in, in that sense. He always has everything he buys written down, uh, organized in a, in a specific way. And I saw him, I saw, we discussed it a little while, a couple of months ago. And I've been meaning to get to it, and finally I got to it, and he was going over it. And he was, we were discussing how so many people are so afraid to go and do that. Because it's just this stress I feel like they don't want to put on themselves. Head in the sand. Right. So they kind of just, re they'd, re they'd rather be clueless to it. They'd rather be ignorant to it and just spend carelessly. But if you can write down what your expenses are, what you spend, what you don't spend, how much you'd like to save, if you, if you essentially organize your money the, the way it should be organized, and that's obviously relative, that's according to your, to your lifestyle, you'll end up being a lot better with your money. You'll hopefully keep your expenses below your means. You won't go broke. You won't be part of that large percentage of Americans that's in debt, that can't pay their bills, that maxes out credit cards. And so that's something that I really appreciate um, getting from him. And as far as like financial freedom goes, what, what are certain things that you've gained over the past couple of years that you think people can kind of build on? Because a, a lot of people hear these things all the time. Like yeah. people, people on TV talk about these things, but I don't think anyone internalizes it. Sure. They're just sitting with their 70-inch TV that they couldn't afford. Right. And, you know, so definitely a couple things and not all of them are necessarily tied specifically to saving money or being confident and in charge of your finances rather than the rather than the, the reverse. But one key example is the move here. I about now now must be about two years ago. I was getting antsy in New York. I was living <laughs> in Manhattan for a few years and didn't like the mindset that I was surrounded by and I was looking to get out, but I didn't want to do it alone. So I kind of sat on it, which well, if you don't mind me interjecting, what was the, what do you mean by mindset? What, what about that? The New York mindset, like the turns you off. Everyone's very stressed. Everyone's just has one goal. I'm speaking in broad strokes here. I know I, I'm from New York. I grew up there for 25 years. So I know not everyone's like this, but on the day to day, these are the things that kind of seep through, at least in my experience. So I'm only talking from my experience. I don't need anyone getting upset that it's not them. I'm, I, I'm just talking from my own experience. And from that, what I saw, and this could be a fault of my own, 
all I saw was that people were, had one goal and that goal was just accumulate money at all costs, all means, you know, no sacrifice other than their life, health and family. <laughs> and not a big deal. <laughs> nothing major. Yeah. So I, should, I guess I should say at all sacrifice. I don't yeah, know. <laughs> pretty much. And I just, it was very anti my philosophy and you know, there's this thing that a lot of people say, I forget who coined it, but surround yourself with the five people that you, you know, that you want to most emulate or be like, I didn't have that. I was the five people I certainly didn't want to be with. And that is not, not nothing to do with my roommates. My roommates were great. I just mean in the day-to-day -day life, my colleagues are great. I, you know, I still work at my job just in terms of the daily interactions with strangers or acquaintances, you know, just walking, walking through Times Square every day, you know, cause I lived in Midtown, I worked in Midtown and just, uh, yeah, I was just trying to get out of that and match my philosophy to my surroundings. And which is basically money's not everything. You definitely need money. Money's important. Unfortunately, I guess it's has it more importance is placed on it than I think is necessary, but it is what it is. And, you know, take life slow or slower. I mean, everything's slower when compared to Manhattan and enjoy, enjoy the ride. Like don't wake up at 40 with uh, several mil in the bank. If you, if you were smart enough to at least save some and not spend it all in three houses, but you have no friends or family to share it with, you know, and that's, I don't know people like that because I mean, I'm only in my twenties, but I've read a lot of books and a lot of articles and, you know, all those people that get to that point and then look back and then write books and write articles. They all say, take it slow, enjoy the ride. You know, don't, uh, don't sacrifice everything to accumulate, you know, money. Cause that's really money's a tool. It's that's all it is. And if, you know, if you can control the tool, great. But if you can't, it doesn't serve a good purpose. I agree completely. Like I'm, I'm somebody who does want to make a lot of money because I do like the freedom it gives. I think everyone does ideally want to have a nice amount of money. Some people are much more focused on it. I can say I definitely want a lot of it, but the mentality in general, the Florida mentality, there are people who hustle very hard, but it's definitely a slower paced state Yeah. overall. I mean, and compared I, to New York. Without question. You got and, London, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, right. And I, and I definitely, I, I like it because as much as I... I enjoy working. I do like. I do value hard work. A lot of people in New York don't have that balance. There's no gray area, and they work, they bust their ass so so hard and for so many years, and ironically end up coming here at the end of the day when it's all said and done. And it's like, why right. didn't why didn't right. if when you wanted to, 60, 70. right? So you did all that work. You put in all that time to live in this tiny little box that's quite frankly not worth it whatsoever. You barely spend time with people you care about. To, you worked for all that cash to do what with? So your grandkids can have can have millions of it. That's great. That's awesome. That's a very nice thing to do. It's admirable. But what about you? What about the people in your immediate family? What about your friends? You know. And it's not to say that New York's not an awesome place. I love New York, but there are so many people, and you can just watch it. Like you said, you just walk through Manhattan, and you just see people are completely robotic. It's yeah. insane. It's such a difference. So going more into financial independence so yeah you asked uh like, what i was able to do so far at least yeah like what what kind of what have been your when you first started out on this journey what were your what were the ways you thought to get there and how have you how like how far have you come so far like what do you yeah so i mean i've been working full time since mid 2016 so i'm coming up on four years and you know during that time i save around 70 to 80 percent of my income and, you know, I just invest it in, in stocks, like nothing crazy, just index funds, very simple. And, you know, never touch it or haven't touched it. It's only been four years. Haven't experienced, I guess, much turbulence except for this past month, which or end of 2018. But, you know, not much. Coronavirus. Yeah. No, seriously. That, really that affected the stock market. It's um, terrible. China, it's, it really goes to show you how important China is. It's a, it's a real shame because their economy brings so much to the world. When we moved here my goal was to move and it would be great if I can keep my job. That was a side, a secondary, you know, goal. If, if I was able to fantastic, I wanted to, I like my job. I like who I work with. I like what I do. I love the work culture. And, but at the same time, like I was, I knew where I was and I was done with New York and 
I don't have millions of dollars, but I had enough money where I can, you know, meet my expenses, especially if I would be coming down to Florida because expenses would be a lot less, you know, just in terms of housing costs. That, that's my biggest expense and it would be a lot less. I didn't even think twice. I, I committed to you to, to the apartment. I was like, Aww. get an apartment. <laughs> I, I, uh, I said, get an apartment, I'm in, and hopefully I'll, you know, hopefully I'll keep my job. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it'll be an issue. It may have been different if I thought it was an issue. I really didn't think they would mind because they're, like I said, a great, great place to work. But at the same time, I had the money that I would be okay if I kept my current expenses or even cut them. I'd be okay for like two years. And I wasn't planning on being unemployed. And the, the good thing about the, an actuary is they kind of command a high salary relative to similar positions that you know people do very similar things but they get paid 60 70 percent i don't know if i should be saying this out loud because you know maybe i'll be screwing some actuaries over in the right. future or even myself you know if i couldn't find a job for a couple months and obviously you never know but i i, I felt very confident that if i took a 20 percent pay cut I, I wouldn't even imagine i would need to but let's just say i did i'll be qualified for a lot of jobs so and again i was saving 80 percent of my money so 70 80 so like if i took a pay cut it's not like my expenses would overshoot my overtake my income you know everything would be okay so i just had this peace of mind that well i had this lack of peace of mind in manhattan and i saw an opportunity to attain some peace by moving out and moving into florida and you know job obviously i, I it was a tertiary goal and i just wanted to move and i had the peace of mind that i didn't have to worry about the money and then another thing that comes to mind, uh, I generally, you know, I love traveling. Some people might say this is a waste of money and that's fine. It's not your money. It's my money. I'll, uh, <laughs> no, cause, <laughs> cause like uh, anyone can spend whatever money they want. Just don't complain that, you know, that y your credit cards are maxed out. I mean, if your credit cards are maxed out because you're buying two cars, we're not talking about medicine or cancer or treatments or anything like that. We're talking about typical American consumerism. Like, I'm not going to tell you not to spend the money, but if you ask me, I'm going to tell you you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say anything due you to your money. So what I, I do with my money, the part I don't save, I generally either spend it on rent, food, or traveling. And I generally, I have been for the past three years or so, four years, I've been taking a trip <laughs> every third of a year, I would say every four months, maybe four or five. And I would do a big trip and like, I wouldn't have to think twice about the cash because I would have the cash flow and I have the savings and I'm not staying at, I'm not flying first class. I'm not staying in five-star hotels, quite the opposite, <laughs> but the hostels are better. Honestly, I was about man. to say hostels that's a separate are... discussion, but it's not by, not because of the money. It's because I prefer it. I'm definitely down to get into that. <laughs> do you want to like go off like real quick? Yeah, that? sure. I'll just wrap this up. I... So like, I don't have to think twice about that. I literally am like, oh, there's a thing going on in that country or you know, someone's off. And also, like I said, my job is very flexible. So I'm able to pretty much take off whenever there's a couple points in the year where I really shouldn't. And I don't. So I'll just, you know, take off as long as I have a buddy to go with and I'll book things, spend the cash. And I don't have to think twice because I know it's there. I know I have it and it's fantastic. I don't have to worry about transferring money to zero interest credit card, credit cards, I don't have to worry about getting a family loan. I don't have to worry about maxing out. I don't have to just, I, just, I don't have to worry about my friend laying out. I just do it and I'm done. And I have a third thing, but we can go off and come back. Oh, okay. Well, I just wanted to like cut on the topic of, of hostels real quick. Yeah. People have, some people who are afraid of them because they feel like they're grimy or they don't want to sleep with a bunch of people. Definitely true. Do it. Do it one time. <laughs> do it one time, especially if you're single. But you're, you're not single. wrong. Yeah. It's, it's grimy. Gr they're grimy. They're grimy. If you're, if you're very high maintenance, you grow up very wealthy and you can't deal with like a little bit of grime or a lot of grime, you can stay at nicer hostels. They have nicer hostels. You, but get, you get private rooms at a hostel. So you eh, get. Don't do that. I'm saying. It's, it's, yeah, it's no, a, I know you can't. It's a gateway. Yeah, slow, a slow pace. Yeah, 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 yeah. A gradual, <laughs> gradual <laughs> grime. decline. A gradual <laughs> decline to the grime. Yes. <laughs> so do it though because a hotel is nice you stay there you, you may get a beautiful suite but you're not appreciating the country in its entirety especially if you go to a poor country if you go somewhere like thailand which i strongly recommend you go uh, i did it for two and a half weeks it wasn't a long enough time but i had a blast and i don't think i would have enjoyed it nearly as much if i would have stayed at hotels i stayed at hostels i met people who were traveling 
and you just get to meet people from different countries. You get a, a bit of a background and story, and you can also ask them what they're doing. So if, if you have a certain plan for the day, and maybe the next day you don't have anything planned, you could be like, hey, Enrique, what are you up to? This? What are you up to like the rest of the week? And he'll be like, oh, I was doing this and I was doing that. And you may even end up on a different island because he suggested or you know, a girl from a different country. And it just really opens a bunch of like travel avenues. Yeah. And I think it's a great way to socialize, a great way to meet people. Even in wealthier so, countries. I mean, Ireland, definitely. I had great hostel experiences there. I had great hostel experiences in Germany. I love it. Yeah. I it's mean, awesome. it's hard to imagine that, you know, one day if I have a, a wife and her kids, they might, I might not be able to stay in a hostel. <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed because honestly, hotels are kind of boring. <laughs> They're really boring. They are. They really are. Boring. Yep. Yeah. I could, but you're so the type, dude, that you'd be like, you'd stay at a hostel for the I would, night. I would love to. If my family, if I had a family and they were down, I'm down. Like, yeah. No I question. Know, I wouldn't subject that to the, I wouldn't subject them to that if they felt very uncomfortable. Cause I'm, you know, I'm not going to be selfish about it. Right. I, I would be okay in hotels. I enjoy hotels. Just if I have the option between a hotel or a hostel, pick a hostel. Yeah. I'm sure. assuming it's just me and you know, I don't have to take into account other people. <laughs> But I understand that it's not for everyone. No, definitely not. <laughs> but I think everyone should try it. But but yeah. you had your third. What was your third point? I recently signed up to join the U.S. National Guard and significant Pro- props, my 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 dear roommate. Kudos to you, dude. Yeah, I mean, I haven't done anything yet. I mean, I signed up, mm-hmm. took the oath, but you know, I deferred so I can wrap things up at work. But the thing is, I don't really. You don't have expenses in the National Guard. I'm sorry. You don't have expenses when you're in the army, either if you're deployed or if you're training, because they supply you with housing, they supply you with food, they supply you with uniform. Literally, they supply you with. You have to bring very minimal stuff, like one carry-on knapsack bag worth of stuff. So there's not really upfront costs, so to speak. But at the same time, I'm taking about a. 80 per 80 to 80 percent pay cut uh for those six so the training i'm doing is six months the company i work for is very generous they're going to pay me for one month of that training and then the other five months i and they obviously they don't have to do that so i'm very grateful you know if they're going to pay me i'm happy but it's not obviously the driver for this i'm taking about i think over an 80 percent pay cut for those five months and again i don't have expenses so even if you you, you know even if you had all these things, theoretically, they should be covered, but I don't have credit card debt. So I don't have to worry about paying the minimum payments or paying the interest. I don't have a car. So I don't have to worry about paying the insurance or the, uh, I don't know, any other monthly fees that goes, go with it. I don't have, you know, recurring expenses that let's say the national guard wouldn't cover during training, but that I would still need to cover or maybe have to forfeit or cancel and not know what, what will be there when I come back, mm-hmm. if the rates change or it's just, I have this, have enough cash flow that anything I need or, or want, like a cell phone bill, I think you could probably actually freeze the number. They charge you maybe $5 a month or something for it. But that's kind of the only thing I could think of that's a recurring bill. And I, I could just, you know, it's very little, it's not that much. So it's not, uh, you know, it's a very minor example, but I could just pay the money upfront for six months not have to worry about missing a payment, not have to worry about uh, hurting my credit score, not have to worry about anything. I just do it. And then I go off peace of mind. I have no issues. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to try to calculate. I just know it's there. It's done. I come back. I pick things up where they're left off. So and many it, people can't resonate with that. Because like, but, but I got my Camaro and I, then I got like a, a whole wardrobe of t-shirts and I got my like, like new spirit subscriptions. I can't, I need a work. Yeah, it's, and it's like, but you don't. You spread yourself thin. It's hard right. to, it's hard to get out. If you feel you need those things, that's on you. But if you have in a, put yourself in a position because you have seven magazine sub- subscriptions and you have the, the most expensive cable, whatever the case may be, don't complain though. Go ahead and do it if that's what you quote unquote need to do, but shut up. That's it. Go and go and enjoy those things. But you don't, no one has to answer to you or feel bad for you because you can't figure it out. You know, that's, that's yeah. my, yeah. I mean, you know, the advice is, is there. If you, if you actually, if anyone wants help with anything, not just finance, I mean, just Google, there's forums, there's people that have done what you, what you've done that are at where you're at that have <laughs> sur- that either have, you know, moved on or even got further entrenched at, you know, from this point of your life, they, there's 7 billion people in the world. 
There's been a few a billion people in the past. Someone has experienced, you know, everything that you have in some form or fashion. And like, you're not alone. You're not the only one. There is definitely a, a way if you were inclined to, to change. And if you don't want to change, that's fine. Just don't complain. Yeah. It's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. I wish if you, I... if you complain, that means you want something else. So if you want something else, go do it. And then if you don't complain, well, either you're very stoic, which is great. And then if you're stoic, you're probably also not, you know, not, not unhappy, so to speak. You're, you know, you're content and you're looking for more, but in a, a mentor or spiritual way rather than a materialistic way, you know? So I really don't see how it could be any other way. You either complain and then from, if you complain, you can either change or you can't change. And if you change, then fine. Yeah. Complain, figure out the problem, then change. If you don't change, well then I don't want to hear you complain. <laughs> and but then people, either you don't complain and if you don't complain, great. And then you're, then you're, then you know what you need to do. If you don't complain, you're, you're good. <laughs> it's so, it's really not, it's not that complicated. It's great. Like it's, that's that simple. Really don't complain about what you can change also. If something's out of your control completely, if you can't do anything about it, don't mope about it. Yeah. Like once you, there are certain things. Stoicism yeah, 101. It's so simple. <laughs> it's in the past that happened already. It's over. You can't change it. Go forward. Figure out what you what you want to or don't want to do going forward that wouldn't give you that shitty feeling compared to that past experience. Right? I mean, wouldn't yeah. you agree with that? Yeah. That's pretty, pretty accurate. What kind of, so you kind of gave people a pretty good idea of, your financial, free, your idea of financial freedom, did that kind of tie into help being health conscious? Did it? Did one have to do with the other, or kind of just one day? I mean, I have a actually a long list of uh, it's not that long of life improvements where I just I I, I write what I did or or what I I tried or whatever, and then in one column and then the other column I just write the date, the month, and the year. So I don't know, you know, it's like the chicken or the egg. I feel like I'm trying to always get better with my health, wealth, or whatever. And I, I don't know which one came first, but I think it's more of just a mindset. You know, there's always room for improvement, however minor. Yeah, I can't really say if it's a si I think it's just an overall mindset. So there's the financial aspect. There's the health aspect. There are people that have their finances in order financial freedom and then they're obese and not for any you know genetic or injury reason they weren't in bed for you i'm talking about they literally just go to mcdonald's you know three times a day that's their breakfast lunch dinner and then they, you know they whatever it is and, and they buy deep fried oreos shaved on ice cream i don't mm -hmm. know and then like that's what they eat every, that's their diet and then you have the opposite where someone's you know literally like the most in shape personal trainer and they're up to their arms and credit card debt because they have two vacation homes. So it's not always one correlate. It's not always correlated, but I do feel, and I have nothing to back this up. I just feel like if you're very in control of your finances, that will spill over into other aspects of your life. And if you're very in control of your health, that'll also spill over into other aspects of life because mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of counter to be financially well and then be sick three times a week or not be able to walk up the <laughs> stairs or, mm -hmm. And it, then on the other side, it's also odd to have a six pack and, you know, not eat candy or baked goods, but then swipe your credit card until it's maxed on, you know, cable on, on videos, on movies on demand. I mean, it's just, I don't, I, it's hard for me to understand how those two can coexist in someone. So for me, it, it kind of just follows logically. Yeah, because it's. I think it's a regimented thing. It, it's a. It's an idea of being disciplined, and you usually you, you would th so it's like like you're saying, man. Like sometimes they don't. One doesn't connect with the other, but if somebody's very health conscious, they get up early in the morning, they go to the gym, they eat well, they get a good they get a good night's rest. I think for most of those people, if they're very disciplined and it's a lifestyle for them, not just a, not just some fab diet for sixty days and then they right. go back to their shit. But if they can really stick to it, and it becomes more of an interest. That's a, it's a thing that they genuinely enjoy. Once you can get to that that area of enjoyment where you love lifting weights or you love running, you like jogging, you like yoga, calisthenics, whatever it is that gets you going, it'll become less of a job and eventually something that you'll love to do because you can see this light at the end of the tunnel if you're not initially in that shape. And then once you get to that goal and you know a lot most people are never happy you know you can have the nicest six pack you can have great muscles you can have a great ass you know whatever it is and a lot of people people are insecure 
you know, me included, and I'm sure I can speak, you know, speak for you and that's, we all have our insecurities, but there is definitely a level of confidence you can have with a certain, you can get to a certain point physically and emotionally where you're like, I feel very good, yeah. you know, and, and there's always, you always want improvements, but generally I do think the two correlate. I do think when you're very health conscious and you you care a lot about keeping yourself healthy and that goes for emotional health as well that'll generally spill over to financial wellness and health because you can say, okay, well, I feel good now. I look good and I feel good. I want to be able to have the finances to continue that because it's a, it's a very versatile, well-rounded idea of comfort and happiness. So when people have one or the other, it's kind of sad to me because it's like, well, if you can t- take that discipline from one aspect of your life and, and use it as a tool for the other, you're golden. It's not to say that you won't have certain issues, but far fewer than your average person. Yeah. Right. I mean, I just, uh, before this podcast, I went to the gym in our building and it was a slog. It was not enjoyable. I'll be yeah. honest. <laughs> I, yeah. It was not, it was rough. I mean, I did it. I went through it cause I knew like these days come and go. And you know, so usually I'm pumped. Usually I, I enjoy it, but this was, this was, this was rough, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I knew that if I didn't do it, I, I wouldn't feel good either. So it was kind of like, you know, buckle down, just finish it. You'll be happy you did it. Even if it's not 110%, even if you did it at 70% or 80%, like I did not max out. I did not, I did not get a, my, a typical workout in, but I just, I knew I needed to do it because it was just, it was just part of it. Well, it's so far better than not doing it. Yeah. But it's just, it was easy to, I was very close to just being like, I'll tell you, I, I went down there, you know, they have those adjustable uh, Bowflex, you know, you guys know that the 50, you could, it goes up from five pounds to 50 pounds and you have two of them and you could adjust them. It's pretty cool. Actually, mm. it's a cool concept. Get down there. They're both broken. They're broken? Well, I fixed one. Couldn't well, fix the other. I have, you know, I have my, yeah. I, I have the same thing personally. You can always use mine. Yeah. And I was just, I'm saying, I was already like not in the mood. I went down and I, I was doing an arm fit, arm workout and of course, and these are broken. I just, oh, God, like who does that and just leaves it? I'll tell you what happened. There is so that, you know how there's, you know, I don't know, maybe it's five pieces on each side of each dumbbell. Okay. I don't know what it's called. Uh, mm-hmm. Bowflex, I guess. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, and those range for the weights. And then there's one, two, and then the bar and then one, two, three, four, five, and then the other one. Right. So there was four missing. They were on the floor. Meaning separate from the gears, like the gears, yeah, all, exactly. The plates were all the plates were just, and they're supposed to be either in the the slot. They have like yeah, the slots. catcher right. or on the actual weight weight uh, dumbbell, right. and they were just like four littered on the floor. So I was able to put two and get the magnets to click in, and then the other ones I, I don't know it was like jammed. I couldn't fix it, so I ended up just doing the workout with one and just alternating arms as opposed to when I usually do with both. And it wasn't a big deal at all, you know. I didn't complain i didn't storm out i'd fixed what i could and then i did it but it was just more of a, when the second i got there and i saw that i was like oh i should really just go to bed <laughs> <laughs> but no i just like i did it and i'm i'm obviously very happy i did it even though i'm well aware it was not a solid workout but yeah like you said it's better than uh better than nada and yeah just once you're in that mindset you kind of just <laughs> even those days where, where you're allowed to not be psyched mm-hmm. to budget you're allowed to not be psyched to do a run but if you're normally happy yeah, not everyone's david space. goggins like just not not everyone's yeah. david goggins yeah exactly. Do it. yeah. <laughs> i love that guy by the way if you're ever listening to this podcast i admire you a ton you're great i don't yeah. know how, you just have con your brain is just constantly wild. crazy like, and i i don't want to speak nice. for him but i'm sure wild. i don't want to speak for him but i'll speak for him <laughs> He probably, he probably, I mean, if you asked him a question like that, he'd say, dude, it's all the time. But you know what? You know, he probably yeah, just, he feels he probably, demotivated. There's no he question. He probably just says, yeah, but then I say it out loud. You just do it or whatever. And he does it. Cause Wait. you know, when you like words make it real or, you know, sure. envisioning something like they say, if you're eating a pie, if you normally eat a pie pizza before you sit down and eat it, envision that you already ate it. And then you'll feel full after a half a pie or, you know, use your, whatever your normal eating habits are Mm -hmm. so i feel like that's the same thing like i knew fast forward 30 40 minutes i'd be done with this workout i'll look back and i'll be happy so i was like all right just do it get it over with you know i know it sucks you know i want to go to bed just do it is that that how you feel about the podcast no actually i'm having a good time (laughs) i'm having a good time everybody has those days like some people especially especially if you're really not in shape or you really oh yeah the beginning the beginning is hard for everybody. So this is where a lot of people I'll see like, so I, I mentioned David Goggins, but anyone who's very big on people who are successful in their field, 
they have a channel, they have, they have social media and they're, they're spreading awareness or they're sharing their interest. And you'll have these ne so many negative comments on the video. <laughs> yeah, well, it's easy for you to say. I have three kids, a dog, and two tents, and, a, and a, I have a bridge in my house. I don't even know why, but it's there. And it's just like, dude, okay, you're not him. He's not you. Figure it out. Like, it might be hard as shit. No, you maybe you can't quit your job right now because you have to support your family. There are ways. There's a will. There's a way. But the, the, heart, the reason why it's so many people bitch about it is because they're in the beginning of it, meaning they haven't even put in the work yet. So you'll have people that are morbidly obese or they're broke as a bat. And I don't know if bats were broke, by the way. I don't know how this thing ha came along. but Baseball. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> not, not, the, not, okay. The, okay. not the vampire. No, bat. I thought we were totally talking about the, the, the animal. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's, I, I'm, I'm guessing they, it's No one baseball. likes them. You swing broken bat on the field. <laughs> That's no, what I always thought. No, because bat, other animals are liked by people, so maybe they get better jobs. <laughs> you know, they have more opportunities. Uh, like not every animal options. bites a... Uh, well, and bites don't really. Now the coronavirus, like they're not very, you know, like they're not really getting along with other. But but I think it's very tough for people to start, and and I can say this about the podcast. You know, I was I had an interest in it for for a few months before I did it, and I was discussing with Yoni, and Yoni's like, dude, why don't you just buy the equipment today? And I was like, hey, you know, it's a good idea. Well, <laughs> all, you know, and and it's the kind of thing where the more you do it, the more you decide to just put your foot down and say, I'm gonna do it today. Most people, oh, I'll do it next week. I'll do it three weeks. Out. I'll go to the job. This month's no good. I'll do it. Just do it now. If you can't do it now, do it in 10 minutes. Do it, but actually decide, make a conscious decision that I do not care how much I don't want to. If I weigh 380 pounds and everyone's going to look at me and say, oh, you're so fat. You're so in shape. You're in the gym. You should give yourself a pat on the back for, for, for ignoring all the outside noise and getting on that treadmill. If you're insanely broke and you're just you're you're so done with it and you're like God, I don't even care anymore, because like, I'm just alive. I'm breathing. I just want to. I don't care. I'm so used to being broke. It doesn't matter. The only way you're gonna get out of that is changing your mindset to being like, to 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 understanding that you don't have to create this title for yourself. You don't have to be I'm Tom the obese guy or I'm Jill the the obese woman or I'm you know James the I'm just using white people names, but either way, it doesn't matter what J ethnicity. You're using J names. J names? Yeah, did you say like... They're all J, I think, maybe. You yeah. said Jim, Jill, and... I don't remember. James? Yeah, I guess they're all J's. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it, it, this is nothing, no idea, no difference as to what your religion, race, color, creed. We're all faced with difficulties, and there's so many mornings where anyone will wake up and be like, I'm not down today. Yeah. We just want to have that lazy day. We, we, I think all of us have that. But the more you train your brain to have a certain... To think a certain way, especially if you have a goal in mind, the most important thing is starting. Once you've already gotten your foot in the door, whether it's hitting the gym or saving $5 a week, you're so much more likely to continue and move forward than if you were just to say, eh, it's not for me. Or baby steps as opposed baby to steps, saving a million dollars. Just save, 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 patience. save People 10 bucks. People don't have patience, man. Save 10 bucks. Right. Save 100 bucks. Right. And it, you'll see, you'll see, you look back a couple of months and you'll be like, wow, I did it. Yeah. Saved a few hundred bucks now because it's, you know. Yeah. But uh, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts <laughs> and read a lot of nonfiction books, I guess. And it's hard for me to remember who said what. So I know I didn't say this. Someone did. So kudos to that man or woman. But <laughs> basically, if you do want to go to the gym, it's don't even, don't even if you've never been to the gym if you're at, or if you've been and you haven't gone in months or a year and you're having a real hard time going and you don't want to spend 50 minutes there and do it, just drive there. Just walk there. Just enter the building. Swipe your key, you know, access key, whatever it is. Turn around, walk out, and go to work or go home, make breakfast. But just do that for a week. And then a week later or, you know, your timeline, go in, spend five minutes there. Go on the treadmill, do a walk for five minutes or, you know, or just, or just sit down and watch people working out. And eventually you're building up a habit of going to the gym, spending time at the gym. And then eventually that's just part of your day. And now you're, and you know, you work out. So then you go, you spend, you spend five minutes, just spend five minutes curling one day and then spend five minutes just doing a leg, doing a leg, uh, uh what's Extension it called? Calf raise, raises. Right. Yeah. And then that's it. And yeah, you're not going to lose weight. You're not going to get jacked. You're not like, nothing's going to change. The thing that's changed, no, nothing's physically going to change. The thing that's changing is your mental status. Now, every day it's going to be, 
oh, I go to the, I go to the gym every day. I'm a gym goer. Right? Yeah, and then you start and then you start spending time at the gym. You start doing workouts at the gym, and then before you know it, you've been going to the gym for a year or whatever it is, and you're a different person mentally, physically. Same way with finances. Yeah, you just it really is. just just do something. Just don't don't think about dropping 200 pounds. And, you know, you were talking about uh, people complaining. I have no doubt in my mind there are people that are going to see this podcast and either look our names up on Facebook or, you know, watch the video. If you're like two ignorant 20 something year old white guys, privileged, yeah. grew up in America, New York, have money from mom and dad and blah, 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 talking about life. And it's like, yeah, all right. <laughs> I have no doubt that I, I've been, I've had a very quote unquote easy privileged life, but I like, it's not a comparison game. I mean, there are people that have it worse, have it better. The people that have it worse, there are people that complain and people that don't complain. People that have it better, there are people that complain and don't complain. Mm -hmm. It's not a comparison game. It's, I don't know how I would be if I had some serious trials. I don't know. Maybe I would become a complainer. Maybe it's just, be, maybe it's easy for me to say because I haven't had anything to complain about. Uh, I think, I'm sure, Yoni, you've definitely had things to complain about. You just don't look at life that way. You, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, you, you can, uh, it's admirable that you're humble about it and you're like, hey, well, I just don't really have a reason to complain. Everyone has a reason. Meaning, you can the complain reason, about anything. You, you know, you this can always find it. Right. You can always <laughs> find a reason. Great couch, by the way. I'm glad, it is, I'm but glad. it doesn't work. It doesn't, pull, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. Management's going to see this. Well, it already didn't work. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not management, it's the owner. Right? Yeah. Either way, it didn't work beforehand. That's on record. It didn't work beforehand. Didn't work beforehand. <laughs> Just like you guys didn't work. There are certain things I don't want to preach about because I am young and I'm, I lack a lot of knowledge in many subjects. But Amen. And I, right. And I have a lot of ways to go. I'm not. You guys can see. You see my body. I'm not jacked. I definitely. I, I'm, I'm happy with my body as of now. And, and I'm definitely have work Flex to that do. right arm, bro. <laughs> yeah. This guy, you know. But it, I'm at a point where I, I enjoy it. You know, there are foods. I have, I have a plate of mac and cheese on the table right now. I love my pasta. Uh, I've been pretty good about it, though. Off camera. Off camera. <laughs> no, but I've been good about it. But. I happen to genuinely enjoy working out. I do. I'm not, I don't love cardio. That is a, that is a weak point for me. It is very, it's, it's getting easier for me. I've kind of found. You walk to the gym, right? Right. It's I do walk. It's right. a half hour each. I mean, true, all together. True. So I do do the walk and I've been using, I like the Stairmaster. I got into that and car cardio is not something I particularly love to do. I, I love weightlifting, but it's, I've appreciated it more because I see that I'm losing the weight. I see that it's working. I see that it's, it's bringing me happiness. So the action itself may not be enjoyable, but the result is. So I, I'm, the, the complete picture is worth it. So for a lot of people, I've never been obese. I've never been close to it. I've had, there were times where I've had a bigger belly than I would have liked to. I've been a little heavier than I would have liked to, but my metabolism, I'm, I'm very lucky that I have, I do have good genetics. And unless I get very out of hand and I, and I totally give up, I, I'm sure my metabolism will slow down over time and I can get to a, to a very bad point. But even if I miss some days at the gym, as long as it's a constant, it's of constant importance to me and I keep doing it, I'll be fine. Yeah. You know, and for so many people, like I mentioned earlier, they just can't get that, that first time is so difficult for them. And I, and it's, it's very hard for us to say, because if I was 300 pounds right now, right. I would be petrified to go to a gym. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. No, it's very scary. Cause you're seeing all these people who are ridiculously fit Yeah. and you're like, God, I look terrible. I feel so shitty. You never know that some of those people that you're looking at and admiring may have been in the same position you're in. It's also, very possible. I can only speak for my own. Right, right. When I see a huge, quote unquote, huge person at the gym, I don't go over to them and be, oh, you're doing great. Because I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm proud I, of them. I feel yeah. like that's very weird. And I don't know if that if it would be taken wrong. But in yeah, my head. Yeah, they probably would be. They probably would like, yeah. they're like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Dude. So I just mind my own business. But in my head, I, that's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yep. And I, I honestly use that as a, like as like a boost to my own workout. It's sure. like, like if I no one was at the gym now, but if I was there and I'm in my, you know, lazy not depressed but like sad mood, just want to go to bed, and then I get there and I see some dude who's sweating away on an elliptical, who's clearly working on getting in better shape, I I'm not gonna oh well yeah, he's he's you know quote unquote fat so I, not it doesn't apply to me i'm skinny so i can just go home it's like it's the opposite it's like oh no i'm gonna stay now and i'm gonna actually i'm gonna get my workout in aside from yeah you're, you make a good point a lot of those people could be super could have been super heavy could have had extreme weight issues and and dieting issues and also even if they never did no one there is like 
No one there will ever come over to you and say you don't belong here. If anyone no, does that, no one will ever say if, that. If anyone does that, and there are those people, unfortunately, but I just want to say, like, and meaning, my, I'm sure my opinion does not mean matter whatsoever. If it does, great. I hope it does. But legitimately, like both of us, I, I'm so impressed by people who clearly are not in a good. It doesn't mean you shouldn't be happy. I'm not crapping on it in any way. But if you are overweight, and, and walk, you're at, and, and and you're but you're in the gym and you're doing it, props to you. Yeah. Like all power to you because there's so many people who aren't doing that and want to. So yeah, and want to. So you're doing it. You already made that first step. Just keep on going because like if you have instant gratification and you think it's gonna happen overnight and you give up and you do those surgeries. Now I don't know much about them and I'm not gonna start crapping on people who do it. There are reasons and whatever it is. I'm not gonna go into that. But if you can, if you can, if you are in a position that you can do it naturally, you'll feel so much better at the end of it. Even if it takes you two years to get there. You'll feel incredible. Like I know, I know people who've done it. I I know people who've lost ridiculous amounts of weight. They're they're so confident. They're so happy. They have to put the work in. You have to put the work in. It's that simple. Other than like motivation things like that. It, well, now recently you decided to get a little bit strict, more strict with with your diet, with your with your diet, with what you eat. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of brought that about? So it's two things. So oh, but I didn't really explain what that means. So for two years. People are going to think I'm a serial killer. <laughs> I've been eating the same stuff. I, I know this. I, well, you know this. Not no, I mean, I know you're a serial killer. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, that's what's behind all this fake brick. <laughs> <laughs> all of my bodies. It's, <laughs> it's actually just my room. <laughs> yeah, that's like a, the Silence of the Lambs remake. Yeah. <laughs> Never saw it. Never will, most likely. There are dead people behind Some walls. Some of us. Dead, oh, pe okay. dead people behind walls. Really? You're scared of horror movies? I'm not scared of them. I honestly don't get enjoyment of them. I do the jump. I don't have nightmares or terrors because I've seen like them in recent. If I'm by someone, someone's watched, someone really wants to see one. I do not get enjoyment from them. Dude, I don't you get it. the shit out of me. Do you remember we were watching this? We were watching this horrible movie. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, not yeah. going to say the name. I'll, I'll leave the... the, the I don't the even remember the name. Terrible movie. It was a yeah. Netflix movie. It was horrible. Um, but I was watching with a few friends and Yoni was on the balcony and as soon as he heard the music getting very, very intense, he just banged on the window and I bugged. <laughs> it was so, <laughs> so <good>. funny. <laughs> it was yeah. so good. Oh, it was all three of you. Were like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so good. All right. I've been eating a serial killer. That's what it was. Sounds on the lambs. No need to rewind. All right, 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 right. That's what it was. Okay. <laughs> so for about two years now, I'm, I've been meal prepping. I, when I moved here, I turned it up a notch, but even a year before that I was batching meals. And I was pretty much eating the same stuff. When I moved here, I cut a lot of things out, a lot more, a lot of nonsense, uh, more just things that didn't, don't have a nutritional value for the most part. I still eat chocolate or ice cream once every... 18 years. <laughs> two, three weeks, I'd say. You know, I will just go ham in a pint. <laughs> I have a little small... Oh, that should be a new thing, because you know how, you know, like a basketball, people will be like, yo, he went ham in the paint. Yeah. So they should have, they'll have you in a commercial. <laughs> God, me and my dad jokes today. <laughs> so I have this small little list of groceries. I go in, I buy it. I spend two to three hours cooking on Sundays. It makes me 14 meals. It just, I'll, I'll run through it. It's basically like Brussels sprouts, asparagus, cauliflower, broccoli, zucchini. I recently started doing acorn or spaghetti squash. Carrots, spice eggplant, I don't know, a couple others. And it's either rice, it's either brown rice or quinoa or some people say quinoa or something and then it's you like beans or cottage cheese and vegetable pasta which is not pasta infused with vegetables but actually the only ingredient is red lentil flour or chickpea flour or yellow lentil flour so it's it's actually vegetable pasta as opposed to pasta infused with vegetables me trying that those veggie pastas yeah is like a somebody who is not in the best physical shape going to the gym for the first time. Well, you know, you don't yeah. have you, you eat pasta. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with pasta. You just got to do it in moderation. Yeah, right. It's the veggie pasta doesn't do it. No, I'm saying regular pasta is fine. You just got to do yeah. it normally you can't right. eat a can't eat a box of pasta a day like there's you know god, it's I, too would much I, god <laughs> I would if i could god i would if i could i would have a box of barilla or bronzoni just next to my pillow <laughs> or cuddle it just, just have mozzarella just flowing like confetti just like <laughs> shower in tomato sauce yeah i just have like nice italian music in the background I'm just, I'm just, like, just living it yeah, just <laughs> living the pasta life living the pasta loca <laughs> da, 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 da. yeah so i recently just starting b12 
being way more serious. I mean, I was always serious about it, but being more strict for two reasons. So I, I recently, I also used to do chicken or salmon in it, but I cut those out. And now it's basically I'm veggie based, but I still eat eggs and dairy products. So it's kind of, it's a, it's one of the types of vegetarians, but um, you know, not a vegan. And th- so the reason why I started being stricter just in terms of nutrition and tracking actually, you know, my macros is because I wanted to make sure I'm in top sh- as top shape as I can be in before I head off to training, even though, you know, a lot of people go there and they're not necessarily in the best shape, but, you know, I'm trying to do what I can do. And then the other reason in terms of cutting out chicken and salmon is because I'm trying to, with baby steps, live a more sustainable life. So, like another thing I did recently. Are they easy? Are they, is it are ve- uh, vegetarian options easy in the, in the American Army? Oh, I have no doubt I'm going to be eating meat or fish there. Like I'm not, I'm not even going to bother. I, if there is, great. I, I wasn't. I honestly, I expected that for those six months I would be, you know, eating whatever they serve me because I don't think I can be picky. But if I can, if there's vegetarian options and I can get enough protein, fat, and carbs, then I'm then I'm, that works for me. I know that in the Israeli army, they do have, they're very pro-vegan. Like you can definitely get vegan options. Yeah, cool. Yeah, they're, that's completely available. They even have clothes like that. I mean, Americans are so specific and, you know, if that's what they believe in. I could see the army going either way. You know, this is what you do. This is what we do. So you need to eat what we serve you. But at the same time, people have very strong beliefs, even if it's a religious thing. They probably have it available. I have a feeling they do. So, but if it's not. I, I'm not making a, a scene or anything. This is something I just started. It's not, mm-hmm. it's not, I would say necessarily, uh, you know, it's not a non-negotiable. I'm not, I'm not making a stink. I'm there to, to, you know, I want to serve and that's my goal. Not my goal is not to go there for six months and not eat fish. Mm-hmm. If I need to eat fish, I will eat fish. Uh, but when I come back, I would, you know, hopefully phase that back out. You give yourself like 40 lashes. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> no, so so it's the same thing. I mean, recently I bought, a couple months back, I bought reusable bags and reusable grocery bags, like uh, fruits and vegetables to put those in. It's like clockwork. Every Saturday or Sunday, I would go to the grocery, go through my list, pick up, you know, more or less the same exact stuff. I alternate between some veggies, some fruits, but, you know, the same stuff. And, you know, I'd put it in the fruit bags and, and the plastic bags, and it would drive me crazy because I would get home, I'd have, you know, 10 fruit bags and then, you know, 15 shopping bags and they would go in the garbage and then I'll do the same thing next week. And it's like, this makes no sense on any level. It is completely wasteful. So I went on Amazon, I bought about 15 or 20 fruit bags. So I have some extra in case I need to buy more for whatever reason, if I'm having people over or I'm doing some shopping for Rafi or whatever it is. And then I also bought regular bags and I started just going with my, my, hike my traveler backpacking bag that huge bag and i just put it on my shoulders i put all the stuff in there and i just bike home because i was sick of coming in here every week and throwing out all that plastic it just makes no sense to me so it's just it's so it's a combination of trying to just get into my fitness get more into a, a, a specific groove and also just being more sustainable obviously salmon and chicken has have a very important place in a lot of people's food intake and that's fine. Do you just, you know, make sure the chickens aren't being tortured. But I just chose on my I own. I wish it was so easy, man. No, of course. I mean, it's there's hard. cage-free and there's, you know, it's all pricier. that stuff. It's pricier to get that. Yeah, I would love listen, to. Listen, if it's yeah. important, you do it. If it's True. not important, that's True. on you. Yeah. And, you know, you as long as, you know, you're okay with that, you have to reconcile that. Not, you know, no one else. I mean, some people, some vegans or vegetarians will disagree with me, but I think... You know, everyone's got to do their own thing. I would like to, at some point, cut out eggs and dairy, but it's a little hard in terms of, you know, protein and vitamins and all that stuff. So I kind of, I'm just, you know, I just started the fish thing a couple weeks ago. So just baby steps. And if I can do that and I, and I will not be harming myself, and I know I won't be because there are plenty of vegans, as long as I can just make sure I'm getting what I need, I would love to phase out all animal based foods for my diet um but i just need to do more research and need to take make sure i'm taking care of myself properly very cool and as far as the national guard kind of goes what are your expectations going into it what do you kind of think coincidental with my antsiness about 
living in New York and wanting to move out of New York City was this feeling of la- of lacking, of emptiness. I, I, w- I don't want to go as far as to say emptiness. You know, I feel like some people are actually really going through something tough and I don't want to say I was. You know, I was still happy, content to some extent, but there was this nagging feeling in the back of my mind, back of my heart, wherever you, you want to say it is. And I just felt that I wasn't doing anything that I found to be worthwhile. And I'm not talking down to any actuaries. Just, people take people hear things and they're like, "Well, what do you mean? You mean actuaries are?" You always have to do yeah, this nowadays. And I just I, I need a qualifier. Say, I need so a, much... I need a qualifier. Oh, yeah. I am not saying anything. <laughs> there's anything wrong or all actuaries are empty souls. I, for me personally, I felt that I wasn't doing enough. I was waking up every day. I would eat breakfast. I would go to work. I would hang out. Maybe I was still drinking then. So I would maybe go out for happy hours. I would come and, you know, I don't know if I even said I would go to work. I would go to work. I would come. I would, then I would go to the happy hours after work and, you know, I would work out maybe if I wasn't drunk or, you know, or I would work out and then go to the happy hours and I would go to bed. And, and I and, you know, a lot of people that I know, a lot of colleagues I know, they, they volunteer, they spend their weekends, they have families, they, they, they give everything they have to their significant other or their kids or to their parents, to their brothers. They're always, you know, they're always with family. And I spend time with family. I try to, but I don't know. I just, I was wanted something more. And I kind of sat on that also, also with the move or the want to move. And I, I let these things boil for a while. And then I went to D-Day anniversary, 75th anniversary this past June in, in, in um, Normandy to the landing beaches. And I was, re- I was moved. I never had any inclination that I would, it never crossed my mind to want to, you know, this eerie idea of serving the country. It just never, never popped into my head. Why do you say eerie? What do you use? Cause it's like this, I'm, I'm a, or I grew up an Orthodox Jew. I don't know any of these people who served in the American art. I mean, I've met a couple vets, but it's just, it's very removed. It's not, it's not true. It wasn't in my life in any way. It's like, yeah, I know people that's, I knew people served. I know it's hard for, for wives uh, and, and husbands that are, that are at home with kids. I know people's lives are at risk and I respect every veteran. It just wasn't, it wasn't on my radar. It was like, right. it's like, it's like when anyone does, when anyone, if anyone invents a cure to something, if it's a disease I never heard of and I never knew anyone that had that disease, I respect that guy because he just saved countless lives into the future and, and current. But at the same time, it's, you know, to me, I forget about it. It's not, it's not on my mind. It's like, oh, cool. This guy's awesome. He just created this that he's going to save 3000 kids a year. It's like, Great. But I don't, you know, it never was on my radar. I never knew this thing even existed, and that maybe could be part of my uh, closed-mindedness. But, you know, I'm being straightforward here. So I looked into it, and the point of the National Guard is that you're able to do, it's a part-time uh, occupancy in terms of uh, serving. So you know, you you train once the uh, once a month, one weekend a month, you know, Saturday, Sunday, and two weeks a year, in the summer. And, you know, you could be called up if your state is uh, in a state of emergency and they, can, and they need you. Or if the government, if the federal government, the president and Congress, uh, you know, want to declare war or they just need you and they deploy you also. But on the day to day, theoretically, I'd be home and I'd be able to continue working. So my hope to get out of it is, you know, being a civil servant and giving back to the community and filling that gap that I feel I have. And part of the reason, and I picked the job that I would be coming, be becoming a combat medic. So I'd become an ENT and have some sort of medical training and I'll be able to bring that back. And even when I'm off duty, you know, not being an actuary and, and not being in the, and not, um, training in the national guard or being deployed in the state of Florida or abroad, or whatever it may be. It's something I can use if I'm walking down the street and there's an accident and there's someone trapped in a car and someone that can't move or someone's bleeding you know, or if someone falls from a climbing a tree, you know, these are other right now, if I saw that, I, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't do anything because I would have a fear of making it worse. Right. They, if they say if someone's in a car, I, I, this is going back on training from elementary school. So I'm probably quoting it wrong, but you're like not supposed to move them or something because you might they might have a neck injury or a back injury right. and you might make it worse. So I, I wouldn't even know I would freeze and I would feel helpless and. I would feel terrible that I can't do anything. 
So I'm hoping to learn something from there that I'm able to bring back that regardless of if I can't use it in the National Guard necessarily, I can use it in my day-to-day -day life and maybe even volunteer on the weekends that I'm not training. I'm well aware that, you know, it might not be what I think. And then, and for me, the National Guard may be something, may just be, you know, some more bullshit dressed up in a different costume. And I might get there and I might not like it. And I might think, what the hell did I do? I mean, this is a waste of time. It's, this is a waste of three years of my life. And if so, then, you know, I tried because if I... And that I'm very well aware that that could be a possibility. If I thought that was going to happen, I wouldn't do it. So I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, you never know. And if it does, then, you know, at least I tried. And I'll have to look for something else. But I'm hoping to be able to get something, get, to get that lacking space filled. I think that's, that's great. I, I think it's the kind of thing that has so much potential to be beneficial. Obviously, there's a chance it can go it can go badly for you. But... It's the kind of thing where there are certain decisions that are most likely not going to go well. This is the kind of thing you can say, you can say 50, 50, 60, 40, whatever it is. There's no way to know. There are definitely positives to it. I hope you experience those positives, but there's no way to know if you'll experience those positive or negatives if you don't do it. Right. The only way, the only way you'll do it is by living vicariously through, through someone else that will not have the same experience as you. So you know, as you know, I'm very supportive and I definitely hope you enjoy it. We're definitely going to miss you, man. It's Hope, only uh, see, this is the thing also. It's yeah. only six months. Yeah, it's not that long. It's a it's a blip. It's not that long. <laughs> that was another thing actually that I forgot I wanted to say. You're not gonna you know lose weight or be cut or get bigger. You know if even if you're on the skinny side and you're trying to get mm -hmm, bigger. Mm -hmm. You know we were only talking. We're only focusing on the overweight side, but there's also a lot of people that that feel puny and they want to and they they're they're bullied because they're small and they right. want they want to pay back and whatever it is which whatever you know it's a separate topic but they, the point is they want to go to the gym and they want to bulk up so it's not gonna happen overnight either it's, just, it's the same way but the thing is it, it will happen over six months you know as long as you eat right and you're and you're dedicated and you show up and six months is not a long time it really isn't no. it, it, assuming you live a hundred years assuming 80 of them are good years which is not unheard of. And you're, they're more likely to be good years if you're healthy. If you're not healthy and you're obese for 40 years, uh, chances are you're not going to have 80 good. Chances are those 40 years aren't even going to be good years to begin with, but mm. way less likely you'll live till 100, way less likely you'll have 80 good years. But when you look back at those six months, I mean, I, and obviously it's not going to be, it's going to be gradual. So you're going to see progress after two months, three months, four months, but you're going to hit your goal at six months, a year, whatever it is. I mean, whenever I do a change and it doesn't have to be that drastic of dropping 200 pounds, but I always look back and I say, why did I wait? This was so dumb. I should have just done it. Like, perfect example. We moved here and, and I moved here end of March. You moved here beginning of March, 2019. And I don't have a car. I did not have a car since I got here. I've been walking and Ubering and riding with Rafi or riding with other people. And I always said, oh, I was going to get a bike. I'm going to get a bike and I'm just going to bike everywhere. And I was, and I knew I was. But I sat on it till November. I sat on it for eight months. And now we're in, uh, we're in March 2020. So I've had it for basically the whole November 2019, December, January, and February. Four months. I use it nearly every day. It was so easy. All I did was go on Amazon, look for a cheap single gear bike, and clicked buy and it <laughs> came to my apartment <laughs> took me 20 minutes to put it together rode it over to the bike shop to make sure there was not gonna be any screws popping out and you know being flung to my death i got it the you know t a day later two days later that cost me 50 bucks and then i have a bike and i use it all the time and i got it and then in december or a week later whatever it was why did i not do this in april mm -hmm. why did i not do this in march why did i not do this the day i moved so dumb. But tying back, so but tying back in, tying back into what we spoke about earlier, you still did it though. Yeah, I know. Right? But no, no, no. And, uh, there's no. Like, it's not a. It's not yeah. an argument. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, but at the same time, dude, now you have it. It's done. It's over. So like that's why, better late than never. It's so redundant, but it's so yeah. applicable. Just do it. You're late to it. You're forty, and that you're still broke at forty. You're broke at fifty. It's not too late. Right. You're still alive. If you're not happy, do something about it. It's that simple. With that being said. We're going to wrap up for today. Yoni, thanks so much for joining me. 
Pleasure. It has been an absolute pleasure. I'm going to go pass out now. Dude, go, go <laughs> hit the sack. <laughs> Guys, tune in to the next episode. I look forward to having you all uh, as listeners on the show. Until next time. Yon, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Yeah. Peace. Later.